What are different ways we can transform objects without changing their size or shape? Can we grow or shrink them? Can we stretch them? Can we cut them and bend them into other shapes? After some thought, you might come to the conclusion that we can only move them. In physics, we have a similar question. Therefore, what are different types of ways we can move objects? What do we mean by a transformation? We simply mean a map or a function like f of x, y. A function maps points to points as seen here in stretching the circle into an ellipse. You might notice there are two parts to a transformation. One is the final result, which would be the image of the original space, otherwise known as the domain. Two is the animation in getting from the original space to the final space over some period of time. What is an animation mathematically? It is a sequence of maps where one parameter is usually in the interval from 0 to 1. Alan Houcher's book, Algebraic Topology, alludes to this idea when he talks about deformation retracts. In the plane, we can move objects side to side or up and down. This motion is known as a translation, and you can see it does not change the size or shape. If we input a coordinate system, we can construct an explicit expression for the function. The coordinates x, y is any point on the shape. Another distinct motion is rotation, which is very important in physics. Pick any point in the plane and make the object spin about it by some angle. The point could be at the center. It could be somewhere in the interior. It could be on a vertex. Or it can be exterior to the shape. If we introduce a coordinate system, we can write down an explicit formula for rotation about any point a, b, and angle theta. This formula can be found in the book Learning Isn't Linear. Now we might think, what about flipping an object to change its orientation? The usual way this transformation is constructed in geometry is to draw lines from the vertices perpendicular to something called the line of reflection, and then the mirror image appears on the other side. Notice that the orientation or order of the vertices changes from counterclockwise to clockwise. This is a distinct motion as we cannot translate and rotate the mirror image back onto the original. This is the 2D perspective, however. In our incongruence mappings, aka rigid motion transformations, supposed to be continuous? It looks like a magic trick is performed where it disappears and reappears. What is really going on here? What really is a reflection? Again, we witness this disappearing act. Maybe the answer can be found by jumping up a dimension? Now we see the motion is a continuous flip over or about a line. Actually, it looks a lot like a 180 degree rotation about an axis. We see that if this line or axis intersects the shape in a point, we get a rotation as before. Now, what if we have a 3D object like a cube? We can also rotate it or reflect it, but they look exactly the same. Rotating or reflecting about the z-axis is equivalent to translating to the left and then rotating or reflecting 180 degrees about the cube's center axis. This idea that a reflection is actually a 180 degree rotation about an axis in 3 space is quite literally coded into the program is a nice activity to use Desmos geometry to create two reflections for any given series of translations and rotations. Let's take a closer look at why it seems any composition of translations and rotations can be written as a composition of only two reflections. 
If we only look at the equation of a straight line in a static way, we won't see it. Taking a dynamic perspective, however, we see that each line of reflection has rotation and translation built into it, as the change in slope and change in y-intercept respectively. Where is the pivot point? Is it the x-intercept or the y-intercept? It is the y-intercept. Here's a nice little tidbit. We can extract an elliptical rotation matrix from a point on the line using the slope m equals tangent theta. Now, let's summarize our results. One last idea to think about. Looking back in the video, it looks like we created something one might call a gyration. What is a gyration? Could this be a generalization of a rotation? Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. And also, if you are learning from the free resources from this channel, then you'll love my book, Learning Isn't Linear, available on Amazon.com. It contains crisp illustrations to accompany non-standard problems with extremely detailed solutions. The link is in the description. If you get the ebook version using the Kindle, there are clickable links throughout the book to Desmos and GeoGebra projects. It is very easy to search within the book for specific topics. As you can see, chapters range from algebra to calculus. Whether you are a self-motivated student solving problems on your own, or a teacher preparing for a math class, this book is a valuable resource to add to your repertoire. Okay, till next time, and remember, prioritize long-term learning over short-term test-taking.